You ready? Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. What you guys camping out here for? Man, for the diamonds, man. Hell yeah. Whatever happened to Diamond Supply Company? I'll bet quite a few of you remember them considering they were one of the largest brands during the t-shirt craze streetwear trend of the early 2000s. But over the years, trends have changed and even the mighty are not above an epic fall from grace. But what exactly happened to the brand? How did it start and more importantly, what if anything caused their downfall? I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com and before we get started, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. I won't bother you by going through a long spiel today as you already know the routine. So with that being said, let's jump right in. In 1998, then in his early 20s, skateboarder Nick Terche built a business plan on the back of an invention of a skateboard boat that he believed would revolutionize the industry. Needless to say it didn't, the skateboard boat that is. But in the process, he created a cult-like universe that was home to the best skaters in the world, collected cosigns from hip-hop stars such as Our Future, and was given the golden thumbs up from an online community of loyal sneaker obsessives. Thanks in large part to the viral Nike Dunk collab, which we'll get into a bit later, who all rallied around Terche and his now famous Diamond Supply Company. Born in San Francisco, Terche's success has its roots in his family tree. His mom surfed and his uncle was a skateboarder. Terche's career was set on course when he was given a plastic skateboard at the age of four, but it truly kicked in when he started working for a local skate brand. Quote, I would design things for them and they would always do well. So I thought, why not do my own thing? End quote. He would go on to found Diamond Supply Company, a name he borrowed from Sade's 1980s hit Smooth Operator. While working on his boat design, Terche began to sell t-shirts, hats, stickers that all featured the hand-drawn logo of the now infamous Diamond. After three years, the boat failed to bring success, but Nick was far from disheartened. The apparel he had been designing took inspiration from the brands that he and his friends were wearing. Polo, Tommy Hilfiger, and Nautica, and quickly entrapped customers looking for an alternative to the cliche LA skater look. But the fact that he was self-funding it meant he struggled to keep up with the brand's early cult following, with shirts selling out almost instantaneously and leaving a huge gap before the next drop. By now, he began to sell basic skate hardware packages and signed all his friends to the brand's team roster. With shelf space dedicated to Diamond Supply Company and Supreme's first New York City store, along with veteran shops such as San Fran's FTC, Terche quickly carved out a solid footing in the skate world. However, when a Nike collaboration in 2005 came his way, it would acquaint him to an entirely new and powerful market. In came the hype beast. Terche will come up with the now iconic Tiffany blue and black alligator paneled SB Dunk. When the first prototype came back from Nike, he posted a photo on his MySpace. Yeah, it was a little while ago. And it went viral. It would be another year before the Dunk was finally released, which would only increase the hysteria surrounding it. On the day that it dropped, Nick's star power catapulted. All of a sudden, people outside of the world of skateboard knew who Diamond Supply was. Getting a glimpse of the pull of the streetwear world, Nick logged in to online sneaker forums like Hypebeast and Soul Collector and quickly found himself among a community of diehards with whom he would come to share ideas, new designs, and drop dates. In return, the streetwear community welcomed him with open arms. And in 2006, he opened the doors to his first flagship store on Fairfax Avenue. Queues stretched around the block. Quote, those forms were monumental for Diamond Supply because we built a community of kids that would buy all of our stuff, selling it out. And that made Diamond Supply seem like it was insane, explains Trache. Other brands will be like, how do you do it? And I would say, I talk to the kids. I mean, I have a community. That's basically it, end quote. As his streetwear career soared, he planted his foot squarely in another huge community, hip hop. In a music genre where expensive cars, clothes, and jewelry counted as a person's stock, a brand with a diamond as its logo was a no-brainer. In the early days, Nick would have his DJ and rap friends help. He gave them free shirts and had them wear them to help further cement the brand in the eyes of the public. Later on, a then relatively unknown hip-hop collective called Odd Future started hanging out at the brand's Fairfax Ave store. 
and its members, Tyler the Creator and Taco, will frequently post videos of themselves online while at the store. Nick would recall, Tyler would help us pack boxes. I didn't even realize he was a rapper at the time. The friendship with our future continued, as did further musical cosigns, from P. Diddy to New Orleans born rapper Currency, who pledged allegiance to continued diamond collaborations, and Wiz Khalifa and Taylor Gang, who repped the brand in the music video for Khalifa's career launching track Black and Yellow. While the brand's credentials in hip hop and streetwear were cemented, Nick never forgot the community where it all started, making sure to stick close to his skateboarding roots. He kept his team going. And with every new drop, Diamond Supply made sure to look out for his skateboarding hardcore fan base. Diamond Supply came about in a time where the barrier for entry into the streetwear market was at its lowest. They made a name for themselves in a sea of graphic tees and snapback hats and became one of, if not the biggest name in the game. So, what happened to Diamond Supply? Well, nothing, really. I mean, no, you may not see the signature Diamond logo on the chest of all of your favorite rappers the way you used to, and the brand is not as hyped as it once was, but they're still hanging in there. Nick was quoted as saying, I believe it's because we started as a skateboarding brand, and we've really stayed true to that. Our fans start very young, and they grow up skateboarding and being in a diamond. And as people get older, they start to get into everything else we have to offer, like our cutting soles. We've been going 20 years now, and I have kids coming up and saying they got in the diamond because of their dads. The Fairfax shop remains open to this day, and they still have their site up, where they have a recent collab with beer company Modelo. When asked how Diamond Supplies managed to avoid going the way of the dinosaur like so many other streetwear brands from that era, Nick Terche, now known as Nicky Diamond, states this. With skateboarding, it's pretty much stayed the same, but streetwear has changed a lot. Skateboarding has always encompassed all walks of life, all religions, ethnicities, fashion scenes, and music taste. For skateboarders, it really doesn't matter what you're into outside of skating, you're part of the same group and you can be friends. With streetwear, kids can be friends with someone because they're into the same type of sneakers as them. Kids are so fashion conscious these days, it has a lot to do with social media. People really care about what celebrities are wearing. That's a total shift from where it was when I was growing up. We used to want to wear things that no one knew about. But pop culture now is what used to be considered underground. So what do you think? Are you still in the diamond supply? Hit us up in the comment section and let us know if you remember them from back in the day and if you're still down to wear it now. Also, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. We want to continue to grow our reach and get out there as much as possible so that we can produce as many videos like this as we can for you guys. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell to be updated whenever we drop new content just like this one. So with that being said, I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com signing out until next time. Peace.